Welcome back to the episode 5.9 of our video course parallel programming and optimization with Intel Xeon FICO processors. We're continuing the discussion of optimization of multi-threaded applications. In this episode, we will talk about a common pitfall in parallel programs – false sharing. False sharing is a situation that occurs when two or more threads access objects stored in the same cache line, and one of those accesses is a write operation. When false sharing occurs, it may slow down the parallel application. This is related to the protocol with which memory caches operate. When Intel processors access memory, they must read or write an entire cache line, which is 64 bytes long. Even when a core requests reading or writing of only a 4-byte or an 8-byte number, still the entire cache line must be read or written. When multiple threads access the same cache line, but modifying different parts of it, cache coherency protocols may need to change the state of the cache line to guarantee coherency. As a result, some threads may have to wait while other threads complete their write operations. To see when false sharing may occur and learn how to resolve it, let us revisit the binning code which we discussed in episodes 5.6 and 5.8. In this code, we traverse a large array called H to compute the number of ages in five different age groups, each group 20 years wide. In episode 5.8, we saw that to decrease the number of atomic operations, we could create a private storage container for each thread and use this container in the parallel loop. This method worked great for improving the parallel scalability of the code. However, it has one disadvantage. Once we leave the parallel region, we lose all of the thread private data. Sometimes we may want to have access to that data outside of the parallel region. For example, for statistical analysis or to implement a tree reduction algorithm in another parallel region. To retain thread private data, we can attempt to implement a seemingly identical parallel reduction. In this new implementation, instead of private array hist in each thread, we will create one global two-dimensional array. The outer dimension will have as many entries as we have threads. The inner dimension equals to the size of the array hist. In other words, we are creating one large array with compartments for every thread to write into. When we design a parallel code with such a container, we will query the thread number, find the corresponding compartment in the global container and write into that compartment. Then, potentially outside of the parallel loop, we will implement reduction across all threads. This method seems identical to the method with thread private containers, because each thread writes into its own memory region. But there is a very important difference. In the new method, compartments for thread private data are packed closely in memory. Array hist is only 5 elements long, which is 20 bytes or 532 bit or 4 byte integers. So, a 64 byte cache line contains parts of 4 thread private compartments. That means that multiple threads will definitely access the same cache line to modify it. In other words, with this storage container, false sharing definitely occurs. We will soon see that this has a very significant impact on performance. There is an easy way to resolve false sharing in this case. All we need to do is pad the inner dimension of the global container. That is, instead of having 20 bytes for each thread, we will reserve 64 bytes or a multiple of 64 bytes for it. We will only use 20 bytes for data storage and the rest of the memory, the padding, will never be used. This diagram shows the performance measured in billions of values processed per second. The baseline, in this case, is the parallel vectorized code from episode 5.6 with thread private containers. The second set of bars is the performance with a global container with compartments for each thread and no padding. False sharing in this case quenches the performance by an order of magnitude both on the Xeon and on the Xeon Phi platforms. The third set of bars shows performance with padding to 64 bytes. As you can see, performance on the Xeon Phi recovers to the same level as we had in the case with thread private storage, but the Xeon CPU performance requires additional padding to recover performance. With 256 byte padding performance on both Xeon and Xeon Phi, with the global container matches the performance with thread private variables. The reason why Xeon requires additional padding may have to do with the behavior of caches. Specifically, the prefetching functionality in Xeon may make it too smart for its own good, in this case. When a thread touches one cache line, the cache may reserve the next few lines after it for that thread. 
that could be beneficial if our data size was greater, but in this case, it introduces false sharing. However, extra padding takes care of that problem too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.